Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is getting off to a great start uh, for your week. No matter what happened last week, this is a new chance, a new opportunity uh, to move forward. Every day is a new day. Every 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 moment is a new moment. And you have to learn how to take lumps and, and, and setbacks and all those things. So no matter what happened last week, we're looking forward to what's going to take place uh, this week, and we're going to focus on being positive. We're going to focus on moving forward and looking forward. And we are talking about conquering fear today. I'm excited because we're moving in the uh, full swing of the holistic transformation uh, masterclass program, which I designed specifically to allow people who may not be in a financial position to work with me on a long-term basis to nail down 30 days that could change their lives. And I'm excited about that. I'll talk to you about that more later, but I want to drop something on you. Uh, one of the greatest inhibitors of success, of growth, of progress, uh, of elevation is fear, fear of failure, fear of what other people think, fear of the unknown, uh, and so many other things. Uh, fear will have you rationalizing inactivity and the lack of proactivity in the development of what's necessary to become what you were literally designed to be. Most people aren't operating at the level of their design. Most people aren't operating at the level that their capacity is capable of. Most people are operating in a corner of comfort or in survival mode. Survival mode is just, I'm just trying to get from day to day. I'm not even worried about being comfortable. I'm just worried about making it. And so you're in that survival mode, which really puts you in a perpetual state of survival because you're never planning for the future. You're only trying to survive the day. But a lot of people are in that place where I'm in this comfort zone. And if I, in order for me to get to the next level, I've got to get out of the comfort zone and I've got to go to a level that I don't know. I've got to go into situations where I'm not an expert. I got to go into situations where there are other people that are better than me. I've got to go into a situation that I've never seen or operated in before in order to get to the next level. That's called growth. As you graduate from one place into the next place, you graduate from being at the top or one of the best or maybe even the best into moving into a situation where you may not or should not be the best. You, you don't want to be in the room where you're the smartest. You don't want to be in the room where you're the best. You don't want to, why? Because there's nobody there to challenge you to grow. There's nobody there to feed you. There's nobody there to give you new information, new ways of looking at things, new ways of training yourself and focusing in your mentality. You need people who are better. So when you get to the top of the class, it's time to move to the next class. It's like anything else in life. You talk about academics, you talk about sports. You got to understand that in sports, when you're in high school, you might be the best person in high school in the entire nation. When you get to college or the NBA, that might not be the case. Uh, definitely when you get to the NBA, for those who went straight, even LeBron and Kobe, when they came out of high school and went straight in, they weren't the best person in the league. They were in the league with some men and they had been dominating boys and they had to adapt their game. They had to grow. They had to get stronger. They had to get mentally tougher. That's a part of growth in any place in life. But fear will paralyze you. You know, and here's one practicality. Boy, when you start, when I know somebody is facing fears, when they start talking about being practical, well, that's not practical. That's not, pra ain't nothing about greatness practical. Ain't nothing about excelling in the, in the realm of being phenomenal, extraordinary, exceptional, practical. But see, practical is the word you wrap around your fear to justify inaction. When I'm afraid to take action, I talk about practicality. I talk about what's, see, that's not practical. That's not realistic. See, that's too risky. That's too, well, the thing is, uh, having anything of any true significance is going to call for you to step outside of the boundaries of your comfort and move into a realm where you're a little uneasy. You have to learn how to manage the fear. Just as uh, Will Smith said, God placed everything on the other side of fear. Everything worth having is on the other side of fear. That, that, that you, you're going to have to, in some way, engage that truth to really, truly excel in life. Get on the other side of fear. Here's some of the things we worry about. We worry about failures. Stop worrying about failing so much and start worrying about all the opportunities you're missing because you are not taking any action. 
let me tell you something. Failure is inevitable. Whether you sit there and don't try or if you give it your all, you're going to experience some failures. Failure can either be a teacher or it can be a paralyzing force that you are afraid of. So you don't take action and then you still fail because you fail to live up to the level of your capacity. See, it's not about whether you try something or not that's going to ultimately dictate your failure. It's going to be, did you live up to your potential? Did you go out and leave it all out there? Because this is what I can tell you. When you go out there and leave it all out there, even if you take a loss that day, you don't go to bed the same person you woke up as. When you step out there and you go out there, be prepared to take some bumps and bruises. That's a part of growth. That's a part of development. But what it'll teach you is that you can take it, that you're built for it, that there's something out there or something on the inside of you better that, that simply will guide you and take you somewhere. You got to stop worrying about failing and start worrying about the missed opportunities. Next, create a vision. Be clear in the creation of your vision. Visualize it, imagine it, put it on a vision board, write it down on paper, be very vocal about it. Why? Because when you create a vision that's clear and you can see it inside of your mind, your subconscious literally becomes a GPA, GPS that will guide you to the destiny of that vision. The subconscious is extremely powerful. Here's, a, here's the thing. The reason a bunch of people are not where they are is because they're focusing on what they don't want instead of what they want. They spend more time worrying about what's going to go wrong and talking about what's going to go wrong and talking about what they don't like until they create an energy and a force that focuses their subconscious on it and their subconscious simply repeats what it's being conditioned to focus on. You're recreating negative results because you're literally worrying. All worrying is, is negative goal setting. When you focus on so much that it has you worrying, it has you focused on the wrong thing. And the crazy thing about it is that science has shown us that over 60% of what people worry about never happens. So 60% of what's got you stressed out, 60% of what's got you paralyzed, 60% of what's holding you in a whole, a perpetual holding pattern, pattern in life to where you're the same situation you were five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. It's because, and 60% and, and of that, of stuff you worried about and, and, and locked down in a corner about that never even happened. Then there's another 20 something percent that has already happened and you're still focused on it. You're still basing your future on your past. I tell people all the time, stop mortgaging your future trying to make up for your past. Stop mortgaging your future based on the mistakes of the past. You are going to have to come into your mindset and understand that the future is out there for you to recreate. That's the beautiful thing. When I make a mistake and I look at it, that mistake immediately becomes something in the past. Now I've got the present of what I choose to focus on because what I choose to focus on will create the future. I can focus on the mistake or I can focus on becoming better so I don't make the mistake again. And that's going to show up in my future. You've got to start taking action. You've got to start investing in yourself. You've got to get out of fear is that simply think that you are literally imagining something bad is going to happen before it actually happens. I'm not saying don't be aware. I'm not saying don't listen to your intuition. What I'm saying is you can't allow fear to govern your decisions. You can't allow fear to govern your life. You will sit up in a holding pattern. You will be shrunk into a, a, a fraction of what your potential is trying to express through your life. That's not where you want to live. The whole thing about this life is living. That's what life is. It's, it, 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 it's the present presentation of living. If you are not at your full potential, you are not living. Some people are surviving. Some people are existing, but very few are living. You owe it to the creator to live your life because when you live your life, you don't only impact you, you impact anyone in your periphery, anyone observing you. You literally have the ability within yourself to change the world. Oh man, my little bro just showed up. Uh, we need to talk today, Mike. But look, I've been through some things. You know, I'm not one of those people that gets on their platform, shows you their whips, 
shows you their house, shows you all the things that they've done and, and tells you this, this is life. No, I'm, I, I, I'm going to tell you that I've had the whips more than uh, the average person will have in a lifetime I've had in a year. I've had the house. I've had all that bull crap. Let me tell you something. When it came some ups and some downs, when it came some challenges, when it came some difficulties, when it came some questions, when it came some things that I had to look at and say, am I willing to? Then I hit some rough patches. I failed. Oh, you can, you can, let, let, from what I understand, from what I understand is that the average millionaire literally goes into a state of financial uh, urgency. Uh, I don't like to use the word broke, but financial urgency at least three times over the course of their life after becoming a millionaire the first time. So becoming successful financially doesn't mean that you're not going to have financial issues. Becoming successfully in relationships, becoming successful as an academic, becoming successful as a business owner doesn't mean that you're not going to have times where your business struggles. That's the mis misnomer that has a bunch of people giving up. Why? Because they tell you plant the seed, think about it, do some affirmation, speak on it, and then it'll manifest itself and you're going to be a millionaire. You know what happens when you actually sit up and you try to think positive and you create a vision board and you start working towards becoming financially stable? Let's just use finances to simplify it. You're trying to become financially stable. You know what happens? You plant the seed through the through, through the changing of your thinking. You establish by speaking in the present tense, I am wealthy. Now, there's going to be a part of your brain that's going to remind you that your bank account is funny. You got funny things happening in your bank account, but you're talking about you're wealthy. Well, see, some people call that call that faking it until you make no. Faking it until you make it is going out and spending money you don't have to look like you've got something that you don't have so that other people can like you. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is living a life inside of yourself that produces the life you want to live despite what everybody else is talking about. So let me explain it to you. When you sit up and speak, I am, you're putting it in the present tense. Why is that important? Because if you keep saying, I'm going to, I will, it will always be in the future tense. It will always be in front of you. It will always be a reason you don't have it. But when you start telling your subconscious, I am, I'm debt free. I am relentless. I am dominant. I am great. I am wealthy. I am rich. Money is, I attract money. All these things, let's talk, like I said, we're simplifying it down to finances. When you start telling yourself that, you planted the seed. At that particular point, it's a reality. It just hasn't sprouted yet. So it's real. You've planted it. Here's the problem. We talk about sowing and reaping, but we don't understand the dynamic when we are actually expecting. Nobody sows a harvest that day and reaps the harvest the same day. Nobody sits up and plants a tomato, plants a rose bush, plants an acorn, and gets what they've planted immediately. What happens is there's a process. First of all, any seed planted goes through a process of germination. What's that? that <coughs> that's where the seed opens up and begins to absorb the nutrients around it. So what are the nutrients for the seeds you plant of wealth? When you plant the seed of I am wealthy, now you've got to follow it up with more confirmation. That's watering the seed. Now you got to follow it up with more exposure to what wealthy people are exposed to. That's bringing in the nutrients of the seed. You got to put the right energy around it because energy impacts weather and how it grows. Now you've got it and it's just stating what does that mean? That's the period from the time you plant it to, through germination to the point when it actually starts to take the nutrients and you see the first sprout. Gestation. The problem is most people aren't willing to understand or be patient enough to go through the gestation process. Somebody sits up and says, I'm a millionaire. They plant the seed. They expose themselves. What happens? You get the first sprout. The first sprout is maybe $500 or $600 above what they would normally have in their account. And they're going, that's not a million dollars. Oh, this bull crap doesn't work. And they stop. No, that's the beginning of the sprouting. You're looking for a whole tree, not the sprout. You got to let it grow. Look, put it like this. You plant an acorn. You wanting an oak tree. Oh, you got some time to wait for that oak tree. It's, it, it, it's not a one year, two year, three year proposition. It's going to take some time. But when it grows to full strength, 
it's hard to shake and uproot it. It's hard to move it because it's so solid. You planted something that was going to produce something solid. Now, you can plant things that come quicker if you know how to build and stack on them. So you can plant the rose bush is going to come much quicker than the oak tree, but the rose bush can't be the end game because it doesn't put you where you're trying to be. You're trying to get there. So you got to learn how to grow and plant. Maybe you need to plant multiple seeds, but you're going to have to let this thing germinate and gestate. The problem is we want it to sprout immediately. If it doesn't sprout immediately, we already talked about how it didn't work, how that person was a charlatan, how all this stuff. No, you didn't stick with the plan. You didn't have the patience. I'm telling you, there were some times I thought I set a 90-day goal and it took me three years to get there. But I tell you what, when I got there, it was worth the delay. That's what I'm saying. Life tends to balance things out. God has designed a universe that you might not get it when you want it, but if you have to wait on it, it's worth the wait. But you got to be putting in the work. You got to give you. You've got to stop letting fear govern you. You've got to stop letting fear govern you. One of the reasons I, I, I get so excited about the 30 day holistic thing is because in 30 days you can see change. No, you, 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 you're more than likely, I almost guaranteed not going to see the million if you haven't made a million yet, or if you, you have, you don't have a certain number amount already there to throw out at something you've already come up with. This isn't what this is about. See the growth in the, in the greatness isn't about what you have now, what you can, do. it's about the change of mind. You can change your mind, your thinking, your focus, your direction in 30 days. You can literally change the entire trajectory of your life in 30 days. That's why I created the 30 day holistic transformation. It's not about saying, look where I got in 30 days. It's about saying, I know I'm headed somewhere different. It changes your mindset. It kills the worry. It kills the trepidation. It puts you in a place where you're starting to see things in ways you never saw them before and you know they're coming. You may not know when they're coming, but the anticipation of something great changes your whole, all of a sudden things that were just stressing you out don't stress you no more because I'm coming out. So I created that. Now, what I want to do is I want to be a part of that transformation. I want to be a part of helping you turn this thing around. So there are two things I'm going to ask you to do today. If you're really seriously, truly serious about doing something different and achieving something different in your life with long-term implications. First thing is there's a link in the description box where you can get my 20th book. I've published 24 to this point, 25 will be hitting uh, by the end of the year, but my 20th book, Critical Mass, every, everything you need to understand what you need to change your life is in that book, step by step of what you need to change your life. Critical mass. Second of all, enroll in the 30 day holistic masterclass. That's me and you one on one. Nobody else is in this class with you, but you. So it's me and you for that period of time, four sessions over the course of a month, plus a built in plan and a disc assessment. A disc assessment is a way of assessing how you naturally move to help you maximize your natural potential, your natural way of doing things and get things done. Everybody has a way of doing things. Everybody. Some people are in a, uh, have a very dominant personality. Other people have more of a follow the guidelines personality. You find the way you work it. Spend less time trying to be what you're not and more time trying to optimize who you are. T trust me, it works. And I want you to do that. Sign, go get the book, and then sign up for the class. And I will personally contact you to set up your first session. And what I'm telling you is you will not be disappointed. I'm about to get off of here. Uh, I'll be coming back to you multiple times over the course of the day with more information because I'm excited about this. We're going to do this every day. Uh, my goal is to get 100 people signed up for this month. I want to work crazy this month. I want people to go into September with a whole new outlook on how this year is going to end, despite the pandemic, despite economic. I'm going to tell you something. When you truly change your thinking, you stop looking at things like economic uh, disruption, uh, social disruption as problems. You start looking at them as challenges to rise because see, even in economic, uh, of, of people, do you know that there, there are people that are called crisis investors? They don't even invest their money until the market takes a downturn. Why? Because they're going to get things that are normally costing up here 
down here and they understand that if they choose right the things they buy will turn around and they will uh recover as they always do for companies who are solid and they'll win that, that, that so there's always something you could do it, when you understand that you're not limited to the narrative that has been given to you over the course of your life. It's time to step out of those limited beliefs and step into a belief that no matter what I'm at, no matter what I'm going through, there's a way that I can rise through this and be the best that I can be. And that's all I'm saying is stop competing against your neighbor, the Joneses. Stop competing against what other people think of you. Stop comp compete against your, uh, your, 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 your potential. Compete against, compete against what you were literally designed to be. Be the best version of yourself and you will automatically win in life. So sign, this is what I want you to do. Go there, click the link, get the book, click the next link and sign up for the class. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I'm looking forward to working with you. As I always say, I'm gonna live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on eat. My challenge to you is to do the same. On that note, I'm out of here. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood and so many other things uh, the information will be in the box Thank you.